I first reviewed Sonic Unleashed back in 2020, and a few things have changed since then. I've since got myself the luxurious Xbox Series X, which can play Sonic Unleashed at a lovely 60 frames per second. I've also improved my setup so I can capture better looking footage. However, my thoughts on Sonic Unleashed haven't really changed since that video, but recently, after revisiting the Wii version, I think that version of the game deserves more than a 6 minute quick look like in the old Unleashed video. Considering the quality of what we're dealing with, I'm really not looking forward to doing an in-depth look at this. Wait, why don't I drag somebody into it with me? Hmm. <gasps> and that is why the 1990 TMNT film is the best comic book movie ever made. Oi! Huh? Want to do another video together? Not until you apologize for being so rude to me during my Parappa retrospective. Wink, wink, plug, go watch it. You honestly thought I was going to play Om Jammer Lammy with you? Yes. Alright, fine. I should have been a bit more polite. Something something dark place, something something learning from my actions, something something dysfunctional family. Anyway, it's been a while since we collaborated on a game review. Wink, wink, anti-plug, don't watch. How about another one? Well, that depends. What are we talking about? Well, I was thinking we could do Sonic Yes! Un I've always wanted to talk about Unleashed. I haven't yet because I couldn't capture footage of the game, but you have a capture card, so this is the perfect opportunity for me. Wait, that's not what I- I could I... go on and on about everything I love about this game. The level design, the art direction, the tough as nails but ever so satisfying s ranks, the combat, the music- Joe! Will you just let me finish? Oh, right. I should probably save that for the actual review. That's my bad. Yeah, thing is, we're not talking about that Unleashed. We're going to be talking about the other one. You're bluffing. Oh no, we're going there. HD Unleashed, Child's Play. We're going to be talking about what last-gen owners, Nintendo fans, and poor people got that very same day in 2008 from Dimps. Do I seriously have to do this? I don't enjoy looking at crap, you know. And that's coming from somebody that owns this. That game is pretty shit. Sorry, my friend. No taking it back. Shall we begin? Alright, fine. Let's try to get through Sonic Unleashed on the Wii and PlayStation 2. What do you think that will look like? So, Sonic Unleashed, while pretty divisive, turned out to be a really solid game. You goddamn right it did. And nowadays, most internet discourse surrounding it is about the HD version, as in the one by Sonic Team for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. In 2008, however, the PS3 was still the cost of a limousine, and 90% of 360s eventually died faster than you can say, I ate here! And as for PC users? Because of this dilemma, Sega tossed the other consoles a bone or two. Enter Dimps. Dimps is no stranger to the Sonic IP, having started their odd relationship with 2001's Sonic Advance. After finishing that trilogy and making a few Sonic Rush games, the company was relegated to making demakes and interpretations of mainline Sonic games for lesser hardware, mostly consisting of handhelds getting dumbed-down versions of Generations, Lost World, and some Olympics titles. They also worked on Sonic 4, but the mere mention of that makes my balls itch, so I won't go on about that. Nowadays, though, Dimps' involvement with the Sonic series seems to be over, since the Switch ports of recent entries have been developed by the original teams, and mobile games are handled by Sega Hardlight. But what happens when instead of cheese grating it for handhelds, they instead do so for previous generation consoles? Could we get something that's at a bit of a higher standard than a handheld game? It's not like Dimps is known for low quality or anything. The Advance and Rush series have strong followings, their DS adaptation of Sonic Colors is considered by many to be better than the real one, and Dimps have also made some Dragon Ball Z games with some plagiarific music. So how bad could this possibly be? Well, before we dive too deep, allow me to briefly talk about my history with this version of the game. See, I grew up with the HD version. I never owned Unweashed as it's called now, until very recently, actually. So, how did I know about this? And also, how the hell did I record the footage for it back in 2020? Well, one day I saw gameplay on YouTube and I got curious, but then I immediately lost interest until roughly 2017, when I pirated it. And I regret nothing. Between watching Game Grumps play it and my first real playthrough, which was the footage you saw in my old video, I couldn't stand playing this version. I would always just go back to my Xbox and play the real thing. And that was my history with this version of the game. What about you, Joe? Well... Believe it or not, this Wii version of Unleashed was actually my very first Sonic game. You might think it would be a bad place to start, but since I was a dumb 7-year-old, I still enjoyed it. I even played the game with the Wiimote and Nunchuck as opposed to the classic or GameCube controller. You what?! 
Oh, and if you're wondering what my real first Sonic game was that isn't a bastardized interpretation of a better game, it's Sonic Adventure DX on the GameCube. Oh, okay. Now, let's get this over with and jump in for real. Well, the main menu is definitely an improvement. The HD version was pretty minimal and started with just the game's logo, while here, the planet splitting is actually shown during the title sequence. Sure, the animation isn't exactly stellar and it kind of looks like a Flash game, all that's missing is the compressed sounds, but it's something. Maybe they actually did care after all. The opening cutscene is moved from starting a new save file to playing before the main menu, and besides the compression, the main difference here is the aspect ratio. The HD version actually cropped this opening video to 21 by 9 while this version actually features the original, uncropped image. The opening is actually on YouTube without the cropping or the Wii compression, so I highly recommend you give it a watch there. Speaking of cutscenes, pretty much all of them are just pre-rendered FMVs of the HD ones. Not the biggest deal in the world, but it definitely clashes with the new HD graphics, and it's a jarring shift when transitioning from cutscene to gameplay. And because of them being pre-rendered, they actually run better than they did in the HD version, unless you have an Xbox Series console, that is. You bet your left nut I do! So not only do they run even better than they do on the Wii, but they're also skippable! Wait, huh? Yep, the Wii cutscenes cannot be skipped. At all. This makes no sense, because these aren't even running in-engine, they're pre-rendered videos. Sonic Unleashed may have some good cutscenes, but they're not good enough to warrant forcing me to watch them again. The only real way to skip them is to watch them through the theater menu on a 100% save, but why the hell would I want to go through all that trouble just for the privilege to skip the fucking cutscenes? So, with the cutscenes being pre-rendered, you're probably wondering about the dialogue with the townspeople. Well, feast your eyes on one of the worst changes in this version. Seriously, what the hell am I looking at? The town layout is accurate enough, I guess, but you can't even walk around it anymore. Are you telling me the Wii couldn't handle walking around a town and talking to people? And what are these character renders? They look like they were traced over the actual 3D models. This looks like a visual novel, not something I would spend full price on at the store. In terms of the Wii visuals themselves, they're alright. This definitely looks like a Wii game. Environments may be blocky and the anti-aliasing is practically non-existent, but this is not a bad looking game by any means. Character models mostly made a smooth transition to 6th gen hardware, and the lighting actually looks kinda nice. It's also a lot better optimized than the HD version, so you're getting a consistent frame rate from start to finish. But again, I've got a Series X. Yes, John, we're very proud of you for spending money. But yeah, even though the Werehog looks like that creepy old lady's pit bull from across the street, this game isn't too shabby for the console. Listen, if you're like me, you would know a thing or two about bad-looking Wii games. So since this is a completely different studio we're working with, this is obviously going to play very differently than the real thing. So how did Dimps manage to translate the boost formula into 3D, considering they're the ones who did it first with Sonic Rush? Well, first off, Dimps actually mapped the homing attack to the jump button. The HD version was the only game in the series not to do this before Frontiers, so this is definitely a welcome change. As for the boost itself, on the other hand, we've got issues. See those dividers in the boost gauge? Each bar represents a two-second boost you can perform with the boost button, meaning the thrill ride of boosting through most of a level is gone. I think this might have been done to make the boost more of a timed action you do in specific parts of an act. Say there's a pile of enemies. Tap that boost button and Sonic will wipe them out. The only problem is that the levels in this version are barren wastelands with not much going on, leading to frequent empty hallways of button tapping just to keep boosting. For example, the end of Windmill Isle Act 2. Look at this shit. This is why I said back in 2020 that this was unnatural. Yeah, well, your face is unnatural. I'm busy, fuck off. Oh, come on, can I at least play some of the game with you? You know what? Sure. I'm at a part that's so easy, you can do it. Sweet! Ah. Wait. I'm just pressing Y? Riveting, isn't it? I'm leaving now. Oh, thank God. What the hell just happened? Sorry, that was my roommate Nitro. He does that all the time. Anyway, where were we? Boosting. Oh, right! The HD version's boost levels were fast-paced, accelerating stages that were gigantic in scope, oozing with spectacle, and required very fast reflexes to master. 
but on the Wii, you get tacky obstacle courses with nothing going on outside of maybe a spring followed by a chain of enemies to homing attack. You thought Forces had the most boring boost levels out of any of these games? Unleashed for the Wii would give Forces a run for its money. The controls for Sonic don't help either. He turns around with the grace of a tour bus and boosting heavily restricts your horizontal movement, so if you're on a narrow path, be careful when boosting or else you'll fly right off the edge. The only other thing this version has over the HD version's boost levels other than the homing attack is the drift. It's much more reliable and similar to how it would be in Sonic Generations. The button mapping is strange though. I'm playing with the GameCube controller and boosting is on Y while drifting and sliding is on B. Yes, they're on the same button. I guess it makes sense, but it's radically different to the HD version. Over on the PS2 version, boosting is on circle while sliding is on square, which is literally the opposite of how it is on PS3. And you bet your ass that screwed me up a lot when I played this version for the first time after completing the HD version. The daytime stages just feel really underwhelming in comparison to the HD version. There's not much going on in the levels, Sonic's controls aren't the best, and constantly tapping the boost button to keep your speed up is really obnoxious. The only real upside is that the time threshold for the S rank is at the top left at all times, which makes going for S ranks a bit easier to follow. Better yet, if you're playing with the standard Wiimote and Nunchuck, you not only have to shake the Wiimote to homing attack, but to boost as well. Meaning you're going to be shaking that thing a lot if you want to keep your speed up. If I wanted to shake an elongated object up and down over and over again for an extended period of time, why am I playing Sonic Unleashed for the Wii? That was a really bad joke. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Anyway, now on to the night levels. Oh god, here we go. These are definitely the most divisive part of the game for a lot of people because lawn hack and slash stages don't exactly mesh well with fast-paced Sonic levels, unless you already like both gameplay styles. Me and Joe are exactly that way, so of course, we have fun with these stages. The HD night levels feature a long combo list, varied enemies with specific weaknesses, QTE finishers for extra points, puzzle solving, and crazy shit like this. However, on the Wii, I guess Dimps wasn't very comfortable with making a complex hack and slash for the console considering they had to take motion controls into account, so now it's a bit more of a simple beat-em-up. Not a bad idea on paper, but this execution is abysmal. The combat works like this. Left and right punches are on different buttons since they were initially mapped to shake in the nunchuck for the left hand and Wiimote for the right. On a controller, however, this feels wrong, especially since the GameCube controller mapped them to the fucking L and R shoulder buttons. Hey, that's one thing the PS2 version does better, the attacks are actually on the face buttons. Yeah, it still feels horrible, but the idea of using L and R for punching makes me want to see a therapist. So, tell me where it all began. When I got to the first night stage in Sonic Unleashed for the Wii, and realized that I had to use the GameCube triggers to punch. Yep, you're a lost cause. Just like that Spongebob speedrunner I had last week. And remember the long combo list from the HD version that was actually fun to experiment with and made the game more replayable? Well, have fun unlocking a handful of combos throughout the game and a poor man's version of the Earthshaker. Beat-em-ups don't have to feature big movesets to be good. There can be other mechanics to take advantage of and a structure that makes replaying the game over and over actually fun. But that's just not the case here. Sonic's attacks have all the weight and visual impact of a breath mint, grabbing is limited to objects so flying enemies are even more of a pain than they were in the HD version, and the hitboxes are so bad, you frequently whiff when trying to hit the same enemy over and over. Dashing was remapped to double tapping the stick in any direction, and Sonic's traction here is basically the equivalent of ice skating in comparison to the HD version. There's also button prompts for literally every traversal action you do, which makes sense when playing with the Wiimote and Nunchuck, but for controllers it just looks dumb. Like yeah, I know to press X here, I'm at Arid Sands, I know how the mechanics work by this point. How's about that exquisite sound design? Dimps didn't program the voice clips to play randomly as you attack, instead giving every attack a specific clip to play. And since the moveset is so limited, you're going to be using the same basic combo a lot throughout the game. Which leads to a lot of... God, shut the fuck up! This gets really old, really fast. And no, the night level battle music doesn't help. Other than repetitive voice lines, pretty much all of the sound in this version is just lifted from the HD version. The Wii version's Gaia Gates actually use the full version of a song you only hear about 30 seconds of in the HD version. Hey, wanna listen to some tunes?
But other than that, every song is here. No, they aren't. What are you talking about? Go to Skyscraper Scamper. Well, I'm trying to, but I can't seem to find it. Wait a minute. Yep, this version is missing two entire continents. Wait, two? Uh-huh. If you go to Savannah Citadel, they only included the Egg Beetle fight because it's important to the story. So in reality, you only get seven continents in this version, with Eggman Land being one of them. And instead of the 30-minute gauntlet of the HD version, it's more in line with the rest of the game with a handful of day and night levels. I understand not including Skyscraper Scamper because that stage literally added nothing, but other than time constraints, there's no excuses for excluding Savannah Citadel. Yes, I learned how to pronounce it. Shut up, Sedatel. Speaking of which, the structure and pacing is rancid in this version. Unskippable cutscenes mean minutes of not being able to do anything between levels, the in-game hubs were changed to more menus, later in the game, continents start to have up to five night levels, and every time you finish a few levels, the game asks you if you want to quit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. If you thought the ratio of day and night levels was uneven in the HD version, the Wii version starts treating traditional Sonic like an afterthought. The night levels still go on for over 6 minutes, so having 5 of them in some of the continents makes it really drag on. People love to complain about the HD night levels being too long, claiming that they've been stuck on levels for 40 minutes, but that's horseshit. You can finish each one in around 12 minutes if you know what you're doing, and if you're speedrunning, they can be finished even faster. My best time for Dragon Road Night in the HD version was less than 5 minutes. But having multiple mandatory night levels in this version means you're gonna probably have to deal with about 20 minutes worth of Werehog in certain continents. All of these pacing issues murder the replayability in this game. You say that as if we would want to play this again in the first place, just like how fans of this version feel about backtracking for medals in the HD version. In case you're unaware, HD Unleashed had a system in place where new areas would be unlocked after collecting enough Sun and Moon medals similar to collect-a-thon platformers like the 3D Marios or Banjo-Kazooie. However, the game doesn't really let you know in advance to keep an eye out for medals, and the requirement later in the game does get a bit steep, meaning a good chunk of players probably had to backtrack to find more. People who prefer the Wii version as well as Unleashed critics in general often cite this as a fatal flaw for the game and a big reason as to why they don't enjoy playing it. However, in the Wii version, medals are handled a bit differently. Instead of actually picking them up during the levels in Hub Worlds, you get awarded a certain amount of medals for completing objectives, such as beating the stage in a set time frame and whatnot. Not a bad idea. Yet another thing Dimps handled better in this version. But here's the thing. This doesn't exactly mean you can just play the game super linearly and reach the end in one go. Like John said, they're objective-based. Not everyone is going to complete enough tasks on the first go, meaning some people are going to have to backtrack anyway, so what difference does it make? Even if this is an improvement over the HD version's metal system, this version introduces so many more problems that we've already discussed. Fixing one problem doesn't excuse the new ones. That's like saying you managed to paint the fence outside and got paint all over the rest of the yard. And if you think the metal system is enough of an improvement over the HD version to warn playing this instead, keep in mind that not only are you missing two entire continents, but the other glaring flaws that are introduced here stack up to matter way more than just a single aspect. Yes, the HD medals can get annoying, but those levels are good enough for me to not get pissed off for having to play some of them again. And while I don't really have to backtrack in this version as long as I know what I'm doing, the gameplay still blows, so it's not that much of a fix. Oh, real quick, in this version, some of the cutscenes actually had to have their brightness lowered because Nintendo didn't want to deal with lawsuits again. God, are we done yet? I feel like we've covered everything there is to say about this garbage. Nope. We've still got the final boss to talk about. Oh Jesus, I already dislike it in the HD version, so how bad is this gonna get? Hey John, nothing's happening. John? Sorry, sorry. Had to take a piss. Okay, I'm good. Go! Yeah! Yeah! Wait, it's good? A little. In a stark contrast to the HD version's tedious Gaia Colossus section where you slowly fly to the boss and do a few quick time events, this version actually has you face Dark Gaia head on in a kaiju battle. They literally took one of the worst bosses in the Sonic series and turned it into Punch-Out! Yeah, it's really clunky and I'd much rather play real Punch-Out considering it's on the same damn console, but it's an improvement nonetheless! The Super Sonic part is still lame though, not really much to comment on there. But this final boss is still better than in the HD version. Why couldn't the rest of the game have as much thought put into it as this boss? I genuinely can't wrap my head around the fact that the thing they focused on the most during development is at the very end of the game after you played about 5 hours of this mess. Okay, now we're done. We've basically discussed everything there is that's worth noting about this version of Unleashed. 
Well, it's about damn time, too. Why did I agree to this? I'm not gonna go too hard and say Dimps was to blame here, because this was in development at the exact same time as the HD version was at Sonic Team. They probably had very little to work with when it came to references, so they really just had to make it up as they went along. And since the deadline was day and date with the HD version, they definitely had to cut corners in a few areas, such as the basic combat system and missing continents. I'm not just blindly hating this version for fun. This was my very first Sonic game, and like we've stated before, there are positives. But the negatives introduced here greatly outweigh those positives. I enjoyed this as a kid, but I'm a grown-ass man now, and I can see the flaws in media that I've enjoyed as a stupid child. In the end, this version of Unleashed is kind of a mess. The controls simply don't feel very good regardless of which controller you use, the selling points have been toned down drastically, the overall presentation is very budgeted and not up to the quality standards of a AAA console title, like a Sonic game, and with every improvement it makes to its 7th generation counterpart, it introduces another chunk of problems. Even if you prefer this game's method of progression, all this game does wrong from start to finish makes you not want to progress in the first place. Sonic Unleashed for the Wii is absolutely a product of its time due to its stark differences from the game it's based on releasing on the exact same day. This practice has been mostly abandoned by the gaming industry, with the only exception outside of mobile games being those FIFA Legacy editions for Nintendo Switch. Alright, we're done. You can leave now. Finally! This'll probably come back to bite me in the ass, but hey, I had fun going back to this version of Unleashed. At least to start. I don't see myself revisiting this again anytime soon, but I do want to update my score, as 3 out of 10 is pretty harsh for this game, even with its problems. So, 4 out of 10 will be the new score. And with that, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and share the video to all of your friends. And consider checking out Joe's channel, Toasty Man, linked down below. He makes the same type of content as I do, so if you're able to put up with me, then you can definitely handle him. So give that a look and subscribe if you're interested. And before I forget, I also want to thank Joe's friend, The Paint Huffer on Newgrounds, for drawing the thumbnail for this video. He did a fantastic job, and I highly recommend commissioning him. I'll leave a link to his portfolio down below. I also forgot to mention that The Paint Huffer also has a commissions catalog, and I'll have it linked in the description box down below. Also, sorry about the quality of this recording, I'm doing this with my webcam because fuck you! Next stop, the Starfall Islands, because I'm gonna get the Platinum Trophy for Sonic Frontiers. Wait, 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 hey, 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 I wanna do Sonic Frontiers too!